Your first objective, feed. Your next objective is to locate a glassing spot. Watch your step. Crossing these raging creeks this time of year can be super dangerous. I've searched the internet for a video like this and couldn't find it. So here it is, the full bear hunter's guide. Ever since I started bear hunting, this mega bear has been on my mind. Heck yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's see what's on it, ready? Every year he showed up on my trail cameras in this big drainage, but I've never been able to lay eyes on him until this day on just May 11th. Tank. We just spotted big chocolate and we're gonna drop down over there, get down on him, shoot him across the canyon. We actually found ourselves running down the mountain as fast as possible trying to beat the setting sun. And if you've ever hunted bears and tried to get on them after you spotted them, they find a way to disappear, so make your move while you can. Just an absolute tank. And we were in one of my favorite elk calving grounds, which is also covered in arrowleaf balsam root. There you go. I just can't fucking go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. So yeah, if you're wondering why I made that loud woo woo noise right before I shot, it's to ensure the animal stays put. As they wonder where the noise came from, that will normally give you enough time to squeeze off a good clean Let's go shot. Let's find this bear. Big bear down. This hunt is one I will always remember, and honestly, I still can't believe it. So I just zoomed into a random spot, so I actually don't know where this is, but this is the general idea. So working your way up this canyon, there should be some bears that could pop out in these slides. But what I'd rather do is go up and work into this big green area. Oh, and there's a trail. So I don't know, that doesn't look like a game trail. That looks like a human trail, so that would kind of turn me off. But for this example, let's just pretend that's not there. And a way to check that is going on Onyx, and you can see if that's a marked trail or not. Look at it, it looks good, it's rocky, there's trees, up in this area has a nice bench, and there's easy access to water. From what I can tell, there's a little lake above it, so I'm sure there's water coming down this little treed section. So the next thing to do is once you located a good spot, you're gonna wanna look at the north facing ridge and look for a good glassing spot. So you're gonna find a perch with a wide angle of view. And once you look at that, you can kind of go on Google Earth and scroll and look back and see how much you can see. And so this is a pretty accurate view of probably what you're going to be able to see. It's not exactly, but it'll be close. Um, both these zones look pretty good, but what you're going to want to focus on is elevation. Um, April 15th, in my area, the elevation is about 5,800 to about 6,000. So what you're going to want to do is check the elevations, but for this example, we're just going to pretend this is 58 to 6,000, which is, I think, prime. All right, so once you pick the glassing spot, um, get out your measuring tool and scroll it around and kind of see what your distances are looking like. 1,000 yards to about 1,800, that's actually pretty good. Um, because what you can do is you could actually drop down, and if you have a good long range gun, you could drop down and shoot across the canyon five or 600 yards. And with no wind, you can definitely make that shot if you have a long range gun set up. Um, but what you could also do is just drop down, sneak around on this big outcrop, and then you'll be probably within 300 yards. So, so yeah, just looking at it 
from up top. Um, honestly, it looks like it's too high of elevation for early April. This is just to show you an example. And the main thing is just finding glassing spots where you can see a lot of country. Because what I found with bear hunting is the more you can see, the more you will find. When I think about bear hunting in the spring, epic grass covered shoots, raging creeks, and incredible landscapes fill my mind. As the snow line on the south facing canyon recedes, the bears slowly follow, searching for new green shoots that produce a wide variety of foods. Backpacking into these remote, roadless areas can result in finding an unhunted population where large male bears dominate the landscape. The mornings can be brisk, but midday feels like summer with temps into the 60s and you just can't beat it this time of year. When they first come out of the den, these big boars are looking for prime lush green to get their digestive system going after a long winter. And Remy was actually saying that these boars are trying to locate cubs so they can dig them up and kill them. So then they have a sow that they can breed later in the spring, come May or June. All that green then pushes out the plug, which is just another name for the giant dump they've been holding in all winter. April 15th to May 1st is my favorite time to find bears because they can be so predictable. All you need to do is locate the snow line on the south facing side of the canyon. From my experience, I've also noticed these bears will stay in the same general area with the snow line all the way through this 16 day period. Once May comes around, I completely switch up the game plan and find hillsides with arrowleaf balsam root and where cow elk frequent. These areas this time of year are where elk are going to have their calves and where you can possibly find the bear of a lifetime. After they've ran a couple weeks worth of grass through their digestive system, they are ready for meat. So deer, elk, and even moose newborns in their first weeks of life are on the menu for a large mature boar. I've actually walked up on a baby mule deer and it didn't jump up until I was about three feet from it. It scared the crap out of me, but if I was a bear, this would have been a super easy meal since it could barely run at the time. So mama bears actually carry their cubs for two years and sometimes more from what I've read. So his goal is to kill the young cubs, in turn putting that sow back into heat. It's kind of fucked up. So killing large bears will actually increase the bear population, and that's why running hounds and baiting in Idaho is so effective, because they're ensuring that they take a mature bear, which then leaves more cubs. And in my area of western Montana, I've noticed people just go out and end up slaying the first raccoon-sized bear that pops out on the hillside. It's hard to judge bears, really. Like I. I think it's super hard to tell if it's a boar or a sow unless it's a giant boar because then they just have a, you know, the massive head and they have that swagger where they're just like swaying back and forth, their bellies dragging. I posted a few bear hunting YouTube shorts and definitely got some hate comments. I don't hate bears at all. They're actually my favorite animal to hunt and surprisingly not elk compared to the common favorite. In my opinion, the days of good quality elk hunting on public land are few and far between. Because in my area, we introduced the invasive oversized Canadian wolf and they've been absolutely crushing them because of our steep terrain. They use it to their advantage and run these elk and deer into the bottoms and they just don't stand a chance. And I've noticed in a lot of the areas where there's a lot of wolves, the animals are just getting crushed and it's just worse and worse every year. And another thing with the elk hunting is there's just a ton of hype around it. If you look on YouTube, there's a million videos of people elk hunting and calling in bulls, and it's because it's so much fun. What I've noticed is hunting these elk that have been hunted are now becoming very call shy. So if you find an area where no one has been hunting and make a, you know, make a cow call, that bull is going to be curious and he should come and investigate and come and check it out. But now with all the other hunters out there, if they hear a cow call, some of those bulls just take off running. So what I've had a decent amount of luck with is actually just sneaking in quiet. All right, here are some of my personal bear hunting experiences. Five years ago, this is the bear Tucker and I got together. We dropped in and made a solid shot across the canyon. A few weeks later, we found this chocolate bear with her little chocolate chips, and they were absolutely crushing the arrow leaf balsam root as they worked their way up the ridge. And this was one of the worst days ever. I pulled 67 ticks off me, counting every single one of them. Let's pause it real quick. Uh, this is something you need to be cautious about. I ended up getting Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and literally felt like I was dying. But yeah, ticks are nothing you should take lightly. Then fall came around and I saw these bears out scouting for elk. 
The next spring, I killed this young chocolate bear with Luke. A great looking bear, but just looking at his teeth, you can tell that he's a younger boar. And Lyric and my grandpa helped me make him into some awesome maple sausage. And here's the tree crusher. That next spring, my buddy killed this giant with his bow, and I just have a feeling that it's the same bear. So across the drainage, so probably about a mile, so definitely in the same zone. And these bears move a lot, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's the same bear. He was running over these saplings like they were nothing. It was insane. And uh, he ended up getting him full body mounted, just an awesome bear altogether. And then Brennan killed this ancient giant. I guess the trees and stuff are broken from where he fell down. There's my bear. That's what he fell down all the way from up there. Boom, down this massive cliff. I just rolled him up onto the snow and check this out. He is ancient. Look at those teeth, man. <laughs> that is a good bear. Bobby the bear across the canyon. Pretty much immediately decided to make a move on him. I uh, dropped down, crossed the creek, climbed up this avalanche shoot on the other side, got up on this big rock face next to this waterfall, and he hadn't moved very far. Just an epic hunt. Tucker and I headed into some gnarly goat country where we found this deadhead buried in the snow a couple miles into the canyon. It was pretty fun setting up camp and watching the mountain goats from where we were camped out. Drying out our boots. Tucker melted his. <laughs> up the canyon, we spotted a giant black and he was like two miles up the drainage. We got across from him and just like bears do, he disappeared. We forgot our snowshoes, so we got pretty much wrecked. Buried. It's quite very deep. <laughs> that next week, Jack and I went in for a two day mission and didn't forget snowshoes this time. After about a seven mile hike, we got to this area that was just awesome. Super snowy, and we spotted a mountain goat and a bear. She ended up having two cute little cubs with her, so we got to watch them for a while, which is super fun. The next morning we crossed the sketchy creek crossing and found them again, and the goat was still hanging out. And it was cool because the goat was actually looking at the bears. Then Brennan and I were out shed hunting and glassed up this beauty of a chocolate. So we dropped in and tried calling him in. We ended up stalking into the timber and had him at 30 yards, but all we could see was his head. So no clean shot. And then later in the spring, I saw these four bears. A couple days later, I saw a super duper fresh elk calf. So that evening, I decided to post up. Sure enough, I spotted a bear and ended up calling it into 60 yards. It ended up having a crazy cool chest patch. Eating bears is another hot topic. And if you're worried about the gaminess of bear meat, what I have found is to cut off all of the fat and grind it with pork fat. The fat is kind of what holds the flavor. And if you make it into some form of sausage, that is the best way to go if you're picky with bear meat. And the sausage that I've made, I would definitely pick over mule deer sausage that I've made in the past. So it's not bad at all. But be sure to cook it thoroughly because some bears carry a parasite called trichinosis. I don't know if you guys follow Meat Eater, but he actually got trichinosis. And here's a quick clip of what happened. I wanted to take him out on a bear hunt. We go out bear hunt. Work kills a nice six foot six black bear. It's a tanker of a black bear. We build a little fire and cut some willow forks and some willow sticks and start threading on basically bear kebabs on these skewers. And we're cooking these bear kebabs and it's raining. So it's like hard to get it hot. We're sitting there and sitting there, and now it's time to go. We gotta pack a bunch of stuff back down to where we're based out of. And I call it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's probably okay to eat this meat. And it's so poorly cooked. I'm like sorting out what is too rare and what I think is done enough. And I eat it, and the boy larva and the girl larva make love in your stomach. And they produce thousands and thousands and thousands of larvae. Which then get into your bloodstream, and they burrow out of your circulatory system into your muscle. 
A month later, when we all got intense muscle pain, here, here, your calves, was all the spots of those larvae particularly. Yeah, like so if you do end up killing a bear, definitely cook it all the way through. Sitka posted this article and that freezing the meat is not going to kill it. And to make sure to cook it to at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I read a few other articles that said 150, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. But yeah, when it's cooked, it's completely safe to eat. And they got a pretty cool picture of this color phase rolling over the ridge top. And don't cook it in the microwave, that doesn't work. If you guys like videos like this, be sure to leave me a comment and I'll keep the videos coming. Keep crushing it and have a great day.